The big October update for Windows 10, build 1809, not 1803 as I keep accidentally saying, that was the April update, has just dropped and begun rolling out to users. It contains a few smaller level updates to the operating system than 1803 had, but it's also missing a few key features that we've been told were coming this year. And that's a little curious, but let's flip on over to the desktop and check out what this update has in store for us. All right, before we get too far into what is in this update, I wanted to cover a couple of things that are missing from this update, and I, I would like to know where they are. Sets, the new feature that Microsoft has been teasing for a while, which enables tabs in many different applications, including Windows Explorer and Notepad and things like that. While I didn't care too much about some of the other programs getting tabs, I was very much looking forward to Windows Explorer getting tabs, as has very many people, and the sets were in the beta versions of this update, but once the full release one came out, they were pulled from it yet again. I guess they still need new, more work. I really hope this comes out at a decent point. Like I, I would like to have this now, because most of the uh, third party or other ways to add tabs to Explorer aren't all that great anymore as they were in Windows 7. There haven't been any changes to Cortana, at least significant ones, in this update, so that sucks. And Microsoft had announced that the October update would have a machine learning feature that uh, basically took notes and learned when it should and shouldn't try to restart your computer for updates, which would mean you get l l fewer um, instances of unexpected reboots or forced updates, which was really cool sounding. However, in the most recent interview that they were asked about that feature in the update, they gave a very nondescript answer, like trying to dodge it. And as far as I can tell, it's not actually in this update, so that sucks. But there are a cool couple things to check out here, so let's go. Alright, first and foremost, we finally have a proper clipboard manager built into Windows. If you hit the Windows key and V, you pull up your clipboard history here, which will stay in the bottom right hand corner, and then you can manage anything you're cutting, copying, and pasting with the normal command thing. However, those privacy-minded of you out there will notice if I hit Windows key plus V, it doesn't exist yet. You have to actually manually turn it on in order for it to start tracking your clipboard history, which is good given I just put out a video recently about how they are keeping some files and things like that without your permission or knowledge. This is something you have to manually turn on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. I'm probably going to regret it at some point. I'm going to copy a file. I'm going to cut that file and paste it over here. I'm going to copy some text out of the other window. And now Windows key V. Aha, so it only works for selected uh, text, which is interesting because it looked as if it was working for selected files. Here, let me go, let me pull up just a website here. Let me see if copying an image off of a website works. So, copy image. There we go. Okay, so selecting manual files from Explorer will not let them show up in Clipboard, which makes sense. It would get really messy to try to uh, track all of that, but text and images directly copied are going to show up in this clipboard manager and you can pin some to the top so that you always have that available to then copy again and then you can paste that into somewhere else and it can now pop up on the wrong monitor because this is weird whoa okay so it's just kind of popping up wherever <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know if it's supposed to pop up there, but then of course you can get rid of stuff or hit clear all to clear it out. I'm thinking it's supposed to only be in the right hand corner, but it seems to be popping up wherever I have a text box. So if I minimize everything, yeah, it's still just popping up there. That's interesting. It's also worth noting here that every time you turn off your computer or th restart it, uh, your clipboard will clear out unless you have things pinned. So if you have things that you want to persist through reboots, pinning is the way to go. Otherwise it will clear them all, which most people will probably prefer. Also, you may notice here, it's a little hard to see, uh, but they're continuing to update the aesthetic of Windows UI so that a lot more things are kind of blurry and see-through. So if I pull up system here, you have this all kind of see-through, that kind of thing. They're working on it. Speaking of which, you may notice I have d dark mode enabled now. I hate it here. Solid black when you're not on an OLED is not a great way to do dark mode. However, uh, if you go to settings, personalization, colors and down here if you do enable dark mode windows explorer now has a dark mode and it's not all solid black it is multiple shades of gray and black which is a little strange this 
the title bar is still solid black, which I do not like. But you have a nice lighter gray and then darker gray over here. And overall, this is easier on the eyes. However, I do feel like it's a little harsh looking for some reason. And maybe it's the font size. I'm going to increase that in a second. But like the, it just feels like the contrast between the black and the white is a little too harsh compared to dark modes that I'm used to. But that could just be me. Also, if you want to increase your text size without increasing your actual windows scaling, you can now do that. If you pull up settings and go to ease of access, you can now change the actual text size on a global level of the operating system. And that operates independently of normal DPI scaling, which is really handy. It took a very long time for that to go into effect, but you can change the text scaling separately from your normal Windows DPI scaling, which is really nice and really confusing why they didn't have that sooner as every other operating system that I have used besides Windows, and I'm pretty sure even older versions of Windows had that option. So, a little weird there. Speaking of which, when you were in display scaling, selling? Display scaling settings, you now have advanced scaling settings. These may have been added before, but I've never featured them. You can have Windows automatically try to fix apps that run in scaled mode so that they're not blurry. And you can customize like specific scaling sizes all the way up to 500%, which is going to be absurd, especially unless you're on an 8K panel. There are some more HD color options for HDR mode and wide color gamut mode. None of my monitors currently feature it, so I can't really... Do a whole lot with it here, but these settings are here under display settings as well. If you go to privacy settings, there is diagnostics and feedback, which allows you to customize what diagnostic data is sent into or up to Microsoft. Turn off the inking and typing thing because of what it saves, as I mentioned before. You can actually view your diagnostic data up to one gigabit, gigabyte worth of that data, and you have a diagnostic viewer that you could use to look at that. That's actually a UWP app in the store, which is cool. If you're concerned about that or just want to dig into it, that is there. And again, you can delete that data off your computer as well. Do you like emoji? Well, if you hit the Windows key plus period, you get a pop-up for the emoji grouping within Windows, which makes it a lot easier to access. And supposedly they have added new emoji to try to keep up with the standards and yada yada. So that's a lot of pizzas. Microsoft Edge now has an option to block autoplay videos for which we will test CNET. All of CNET's articles tend to have autoplay videos that make me want to scream. No, I do not wish it to show notifications. There is an autoplay video right there. This should not be allowed on the internet at all. Oh my god, it's, it's loud. Oh god, you can't even pause it. If you go up here to the lock symbol for a given website, click it. You can change whether notifications are permitted or not and there is media autoplay settings. We're just going to tell it to block. Refresh the page to see the changes. Let's find out. The video is there, but it did not start playing automatically. Great. Windows Search now has better search listing previews as a result of this update, which gives you more options to launch certain things, and it can give you previews of files, information about the file, and it will integrate into being search results, it automatically pulls up a definition there. Kind of neat. Windows 10 search still pales in comparison to uh, Apple Spotlight search most of the time, but this at least fleshes it out a bit more, and I'm actually a pretty big fan. Looks like we have some upcoming Cortana devices that you can set up with your computer. You get a lovely advertisement for that. In the task manager, it's getting very crowded up in here, there are now uh, power usage tabs for every single process, which is very beneficial if you're on a laptop and want to maximize your battery life, or just want to keep an eye on it in general. You can see which processes are using power at the moment, and then a trend of how much power on average they use over time. With this update, you'll also be able to install fonts on your computer without admin account which is really handy. That's always been a problem for people who aren't the admin on their computer but want to use fonts. That's always a real annoyance. Touchscreen users will also be given SwiftKey swipe keyboard now, which is popular among some. I can't seem to understand why. There is a new Windows 
Uh, screenshot snipping tool replacement. Apparently snipping tool is getting depreciated at some point, and this new tool, activated by pressing the Windows key Shift and S at the same time, now works very similarly in terms of like an integrated UI like the new Mac screenshotting tool that I just showed in a recent video. It pops up these little controls, drag and select something to screenshot it, and it automatically saves it to the clipboard. And if you click on it, you can mark it up. You can erase. You can highlight stuff. <laughs> you can measure and draw across that line. You can crop the image, apply some changes, undo some changes, make a new snip altogether, or save it or copy it to the clipboard or share it online. So very competitive or trying to be competitive to the other screenshotting applications available. And if we pull that back up, you can do freeform, rectangular or full screen. Now something you will notice. Only one of these, despite the fact that it says that one is saved to my clipboard, only one of these shows up in the clipboard. Apparently that's a reported problem that it, the new snipping tool does not always save to your clipboard. I mean, it still probably saves to like your actual clipboard. Yeah, when I'm in my Discord chat here, if I hit Control V to paste the image, it actually, you can kind of see there, that's the full screen image. So it doesn't save to the new clipboard, but it saves to your actual clipboard. So there's still a disconnect there where the new clipboard is kind of, unfortunately, almost like a sniffer overlay on top of normal Windows clipboard interaction, which is a little disappointing to see. And that new snipping tool still does not have any built-in screen recording capabilities, which is a huge bonus that the Mac tool has over Windows. You can right-click to get out of it without actually taking a screenshot, by the way. All right, two more things I want to show off with this update. Firstly is the new Your Phone app. This lets you sync up your Android phone with your computer to copy files back and forth, to copy text back and forth, send links, and so on. If you are on an iPhone, you're pretty much screwed because at the moment it will only let you send Edge, it will actually install Edge on your iPhone instead of the Your Phone app, and you can only send Microsoft Edge links back and forth between your computer and your phone. Not quite as detailed as Android. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up here. Sign into your Microsoft account. Your phone needs the latest app, so it's going to send you a link to the app on your phone based on a text message. You can type in your phone number and tell it to send. Go ahead and close this. I'm going to send you a text message. There we go. And you go ahead and install that uh, your app on your phone and get signed into it. So I'm going to do that real quick here. Not going to show any of that on screen. I'm sure you're capable of installing a mobile app on your own. Once you have signed into your phone, you need to uh, enable... As my phone's blowing up for it. Enable all the p permissions for it to view everything. Obviously, it requires full access to pretty much everything on your phone. And click done on the app and the computer will start to sync things into the app. You will also get a notification asking if you want to connect to your phone app on the specific PC that you're requesting. So minus trunks, I hit allow. I waited too long. Send notification. I'm hitting allow. Allow, 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 allow. It's not, it's not working. I'm hitting allow. It's not working. All right, I'm restarting my phone and we'll come back to that. All right, this is joyous. I have reinstalled the app, signed in on my phone, and it says my phone and my PC are linked, but yet we're still here. Hey, look, it now gives you a pop-up for set your display for night for the new nightlight. Well, relatively new. This year, new nightlight feeder. That's kind of cool. All right, so if I got a phone here, uh, unlink this PC. Okay, we now have no phone added. So what happens if I sign out of the app and sign back in? My phone still thinks my PC is linked. Yeah, I've spent a ridiculous long time restarting my phone, reinstalling the app, clearing the app cache, clearing the app data, sending the notification back and forth, and I just can't get it to actually connect to my phone anymore. So, sorry, but I have to give up on this feature. I will try to give it its own dedicated video at some point if I ever get it working again, but I've, spent, I've, I've wasted enough time on this. 
Oh man, I did notice something with this update. My right click, uh, PyWin context menus where I have my own video transcoding settings and things like that that I made a previous video on. Those are cleared out as a result of this update. I'm gonna have to see if it actually works because otherwise remuxing files in bulk is gonna go back to being hell. Why? Why? Uh, PyWin context. Yes. Please don't have lost all of my settings. Direct edit launch. Hey, they're still here. Alright, file save. That should theoretically write them back. Hey, they're back. Alright, so on the off chance you're using that, gotta rerun it. The game bar for Windows UWP games actually got an update as well. However, it doesn't get shown up or detected when I was recording in OBS, so I had to cut the segment. I, there's a couple articles linked in the description below. They mostly cover it. However, the supposed feature to show VRAM usage, GPU usage, and the frame rate of your video games is yet another feature that was in the beta for this update. So all of the websites went live saying it was in this update, but it got cut, and it is not actually in this update. They cut a lot of features. So Notepad has gotten an update as well, which is pretty cool. It now displays line and column, if you have a word wrap enabled, uh, numbers at the bottom of the UI. It can now open files uh, created from other operating systems that it might not have otherwise been able to handle well in terms of formatting. So if we tell Bash RC to upload here, previously in Notepad it would, uh, it would open up with none of this formatting here. It'll all just be like one giant line. You can now also zoom in and out it within notepad to make the text bigger or smaller with control plus control minus control zero to set it to 100 percent or hold control and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out you can enable word wrap here you can go to view and zoom and do same thing and if you hit control f you can now match case for searching and wrap around with where the words are detected and these settings will be remembered the next time you open find which is very convenient there you have it. I'll have a couple links to other sites with information about the update in the description below as I just kind of covered the most important stuff or the stuff that I thought most people would be curious about, but there's always extra little features here and there in these updates. I, I do hope you enjoyed. Hopefully we'll get a new update this year that has the tabs and some of the other stuff that was promised. You know, updates not forcing themselves upon us, Microsoft. But I'm excited. We'll see how it goes from there, but for now just Enjoy your dark mode, I guess. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. Contri consider contributing on Patreon or joining our Discord server to be a part of the Vox Collective. And I will see you in the next one.